Welcome back everyone to episode 2 of us playing as the good old, what is this, Provisional Government of Great Britain. I'm your host, Mr. Britain Lover. But Lord Ha Ha comes again. Romania calling here in the state rate of Bucharest was the beginning of William Joyce's old job. While living in Romania after the syndicalist revolution, William Joyce became the English mouthpiece for the legionary movement in the country. However, while in England pursuing his bid for power, he obviously left that job behind. It seems, however, that he couldn't stay away. After losing his bid for power in England, Joyce fled in the woods and fell off the map. Now he's reappeared not in England but back in Romania. Lord Haha -ha wants more rides of airways in her British living rooms. Extolling the virtues of Romanian legionary triumphs and lamenting the failure of the legionary cause in Britain, Haha -ha speaks eloquently, if not snobbily, to a robust audience across the aisles. What former legionaries remain in Britain have become steadfast listeners, and as long as Haha -ha continues to speak, the embers of legionary thought in the aisles remain smoldering. Government attempts to crack down on the broadcast have been met with failures as well, and even drawn more attention to them. So in a bit, did not make them mo uh, more pr prominent than they already are, the government's elected to ignore them, for now at least. It is what it is. Huh, this is kind of interesting. Pe Ukrainian People's Republic. Oh, first time, first Prime Minister of Ukraine. Interesting. That's kind of cool, actually. But here, we're having a good old time as we're doing Extend the Military Budget. Because, why not? So, there's that, if you'd like to do that again, but we got military propaganda. Some people remain rather uneasy, but just about how prominent the military is in, is in the regime. They worry about the Hobart and his goons will stick around forever. Of course, they're right. Hobart just has to convince them that that is a good thing. Stories of military heroics will become staples of the night the news and radio posters. Well paced. Every available wall and military heroes will take national tours. All this will be carefully orchestrated to be sure that the British people know that the military is here to protect them and deserve their own love for taking on this selfish task. Of course. The trench the military state. Oh, we want more political power, don't we? Yes. And daily army XP gain? Yes, please. Britain is a military first state now, but who's to say it'll stay that way once Hobart is gone? The, through his force of will, he bends into flexibility or inflexible into shape, but what if those but what if whoever takes over after him is as limpid as George V? To secure the military's newfound primacy, Hobart will join up the new Concordat. It simply is a legal document outlining various new laws which would give the military primacy in government, industry, and law. Through military influence in these fields, then it would be functionally impossible for any rebel government faction to unseat us for all time. Actually, I have one question. Could we take these guys out? Like, ahead of time? I'm going to go and justify on them. The threat across the aisle. Hibernian protectionism. Black Monday, Irish American refugees, defense of the Republic, the also issue, unraveling political scene. Because if we can get rid of, them, rid of them early on, it would give us some time to do whatever the heck we want. And give us a chance for our military to do what they really need to do. Of course, we're still here in America, doing what we can, in Cincinnati. So Cincinnati's a nice town. Parts of it at least are. Parts of it are not, though. Um, um, and then Titan Conscription. As an extensive conscription. Well, we've got some comments to go through, too. Such as, restore the British Empire. Dude, elect the King of Liechtenstein, please. Which I think is an Alaskan path, is it not? I think it is. Uh, division organization, centralized command, se command center. Uh, we need to establish a central army headquarters to optimize communication and cooperation between army units. This will allow for more grand scale operations to be planned in an efficient manner. But we're also going to do expand industry at Wales and the Midlands. The capitalist regime of old neglected Wales and the Midlands for centuries and allowed, if not outright encouraged, the gradual the population of the region as its laborers migrated to England's southern cities for menial jobs. The great economic potential of these regions and its peoples thus remain largely untapped for the benefit of all, we must invest. Fuel, please. Fuel, fuel, fuel. And expand industry, Scotland. Scotland has been, too, has been left behind. Had its people neglected, and it's while well stolen by the capitalist pegs. No more. Today, investment will flow north. Military industry, southern England. Wow. Uh, the South hasn't been neglected to the same degree as other regions. Its workers still uh, are underinvested in. By investing in the area and expanding the town of the great syndicalist workers, they will be able to grow military industry quite rapidly. Very good. Uh, military industry in Northern England. It is time to make the North of England a great po northern powerhouse. With enough investment, it will soon be creating arms to support these fighting for workers all the world over. Which is very good. We need more trucks, of course. Uh, that's fine, whatever. We want planes, and I want more tanks. I mean, look at that. That's not good enough for us. Oh, look at this. Cool. Another comment is, Recently I learned about Hobart. He was a wild boy. Praise his funnies. Uh, someone says we should go with a new king. As you have a few interesting people you can choose from different dynasties to choose from. And someone says, No, I think we should stay as a Hobart by himself. War, what is it good for? Mm, uh, do we need... It is 1937. It's almost 1938. Is there anything we can choose here that would help us out? Um, ooh, armored cars. Actually, here's a question. Do we need an armored cars, really? Home guard. Can I replace that with... A regular cavalry. A regular cavalry is also quite good. 
Anything for planes that we could really use? Yes, yes, yes. Better. Oh, hope I was a man born for war. He fought the Afghan tribes in India, and he fought the crowds in France, and he fought the new enemy of pacifism. Out of the horrors of the Valkyrie, the British people returned to their natural state and detachment from Europe, and this detachment bred a newfound and deeply held pacifism. While the cynical struggled to raise a warlike spirit, and did so to a minor extent, the fall of the cynical regime let pacifism entrench itself. Now, Hobart seeks to finally instill the old fighting spirit that he believes comes naturally to every Briton. On the, every news channel, stories of British glories in war, like the battles of Naseby, Blenheim, Somme, and Plaisy fill every home. British veterans have been raised to a place of glory and honor, and the military has been put on parade throughout every major city. This, along with mountains of pamphlets and posters put up and sent out across the country, have begun to let that fighting spark in the people once more. The armies are pouring increased recruitment numbers, and everybody's talking about who will fight next. Absolutely everything. I'd like to do this one. So, if I control, will also be very good, too. Um, I guess we're paternal autocrats here for now. So this is a Kaiserreich or Kaiser Redux run that isn't just totals or paternal autocrats or national populace. Well, we're still technically paternal autocrats, so. Someone says, can you do a whole show and pick focuses like a real opposition, liberation from the opiates, and work with the Darvatanen? I'm not sure which country that is. Is that Sweden or something? Or maybe Norway? Norway? Someone says, I want you to play really all four paths. Curious to see how the independent burn would work. Also for the Windsors, really wish you could bring them back in another playthrough. Someday. In this campaign, you usually be like choose uh, the monarchists, but for this campaign, I'm thinking, nah. Max range. Speed? Uh, that's fine. We'll do that one for now. Keep us off before. Perform the militias. Well, we can't do that one. Dissolve the militias. Women soldiers. Ooh, that's a lot of critical population factor. We lose a lot of consumer goods factors. Ooh, it's not good. You know, let's give and take. Then again, of course, we do want to keep going down this way, too. Um, just because we do get a research slot eventually, too. So. But I want that political power and uh, army XP. So, as much as I want to do Electric King, we will do this again sometime. I just feel like we got rid of the Windsors, and we, why would we want another king? Heir of the Cromwell? Or Heir of Cromwell? And, well, let's we'll do that one next. What do we got here? Oh, we did choose Marconi Syndicate. Syndicate. Uh, vision tax, supply. Um, tax is not bad. What is this one? Elastic defense, supply consumption, and defense. Trucks, mechanized armor, max speed, and breakthrough. And you get attack. You know what? I always choose organization and supply consumption. Raymond Briggs. You know what? Do something slightly different this time. Uh, Edward Carmel. In this, oh, that's in Middle Europe. I'll give you this. Please go ahead. Um, in 1649, when the King Charles I tyranny grew too egregious to bear, it was the military who unseated him. It was the military who led the reluctant parliament to do what it had to do and execute the King for his treason. Then in 1653, the army again took the lead with Oliver Cromwell leading the Commonwealth for five glorious years. Like Cromwell before us, now we lead a kingdom without a king. Unlike Cromwell, however, we will be sure that the British people will never again be slaves to some man pretending a divine rule. Also, since we're here, we are going to go ahead and get you set up to invade uh, a certain place. Yes, a certain place. Fuel refining is good, good, good. Almost at 38. Grab research speed, please. Thank you. Roads are nice and all, or, you know, but we gotta do that. I'm gonna get around one of these, too. And screw it. We will focus on roads when we're done with all of this industry building, shall we? They're still coming back for more. Pretty good. Very, very good. We still have militias, which... Yeah, we need to get rid of. We really do. As we church the military state, of course. Not even one political power day, which sucks, but whatever. Excavation. All right, 1938. Uh, tank stuff. I want medium tanks. That's pretty quickly. I don't like that you get a penalty here, so we're going to use infantry tank designer. Hey, having 1938, everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolute control. Subordinate parliament. Nice. Assess financial policy. Subordinate parliament. Regulated economy, lose political power, get better consumer goods factors. Previsitation, a truly free economy. Military industrial complex. Military command economy. Rigged elections. 
crush radicals. Military constitution. Daily political power goes way up. Awaken British nationalism. I like that one. I think we're going to go with military constitution and awaken British nationalism. If we ever come back and do elect a king, we're going to have regular elections. That sounds like it makes a lot of sense. So subordinate parliament. To leave parliament alone entirely would be a mistake. It is parliament who gives laws their authority and few Britons would be abiding by a decree made outside parliament. So whole parties allow the body to reconvene for the first time since the revolution. However, close watch will be kept on them and work behind the scenes will make sure that the majority of seats are held by Hobart loyalists. By wielding this body, Hobart can give both his orders legitimacy and give his new regime a sense of democratic engagement. Good. Efficiency gain. Yeah, there we go. 38. Few, but what else is new? A battleship, I love it. Almost not even one. Uh, we actually lost more. Huh, that's not good. Hey, we're actually. Okay, so we lost that, which is, you know, pretty much what we expected here. Eight, that's a lot of time. Panzer expert. Be charismatic. Redeeming Cromwell's legacy. When Cromwell dissolved the Rump Parliament in 1653, he took the, uh, took the title of Lord Protector. England found itself without a king for the first time. Despite the panic cries of the royal as England survived, at least until his idiot son mucked it up, he ruled an England that was approaching the prosperity he'd never seen before. In recognition of his efforts, Hobart had decided that Britons will never again be slaves to some king. Hobart has instead taken the title of Lord Protector and abolished the English throne. This has been met with disappointment and even anger by the rest of the Empire. They had expected Hobart to invite the king back to London, but now these hopes have been dashed. Instead, the king in exile has released a statement declaring he is still king, and that Hobart is a petty usurper, who plays a king without calling it such. It has been supported by the Entente as a whole. Despite this, Hobart seems to have no intentions of reversing his decision, and England sails into the future on uncertain waters. Pax Quartur Bello. Hey, political power, nice. The provisional government of Great Britain will be known as the Commonwealth of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Lord Protector, ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, look at this. Hey, now we get more political power. Yay. Yay. Join the Reichspact. Or we can form the Commonwealth. Oh, I like that. I didn't realize we could join the Reich's Pact. Oh man, the Reich's Pact with us in it, beating up the Third International and the Entente. Oh, that's actually a pretty strong group, but what if we don't want them? Or, could we join them and later on do form the Commonwealth? That's interesting. We could join them and then, hmm. Well, solidify control. It's not a bad idea, but we have army XP being made. Naval XP is important too. I want to get at least one for each thing here first. I command. Ooh, mechanized core. Mechanized motorized artillery barrage. Special forces armor is not bad. Really could focus on one of these here. Um, Naval command focus. This one would be really good to do. Well, our naval doctrine is telling us we're going to go down base strike with carriers and whatnot, so. Of course, I do want to help the air power out as well. Let's go with air first. Close air support. Battlefield doctrine. Atha Harris. No. Atha Teta. 0.2 a day. Is that decent? Sure, why not? The ERSA initiative. In order to improve morale for our troops, the Trade Union Congress has authored the creation of the Entertainment Revolutionary Service Association, or the ESRA. It has become increasingly clear that this competitive existence will only be a reality for some time. Headed by Basil Dean and Leslie Henson, two veterans of the British limelight, ERSA aims to provide entertainment to the entirety of our armed forces, as well as some of the forces of our loyal and much-needed allies like France, no matter where in the world the coming wars might take them. I don't think we're supposed to read this, but whatever. The rising star of the ESRA, ERSA, currently is a famed actor, comedian, and singer-songwriter George Fulmby, was risen to the top of ERSA's list thanks to a combination of his own immense talent and popularity among the troops in wider Britain. The shrewd and cunning management of his wife, Beryl Ingham, was even beyond the idea to have Fulmby perform with his now iconic ukulele into a subtle manipulation by the party due to Fulmby's uh, open and public support of cynicism and the took at large, performing shows at fortifications, army bases, field hospitals, and even on the front line itself. Fulmby goes where a man needed him at most as he sings his jaunty, comedic tunes, much to the merriment and delight of all, putting him into consideration for some serious condemnations. 
from a military th staff thanks to his heroism and bravery as a non-combatant civilian supporting a revolutionary or counter-revolutionary struggle. Recently returning from a series of shows across Franco-German border playing for our French allies on the front, Formby had already planned his next trip with the ERSA as he sets his sights on another band of weary heroes in need of some R&R. Life on the front, or even one of our many guard stations and fortifications defending the coastline, is a dour and depressing experience at times, as the drudgery and horror of wartime gets us down. But with little rays of sunshine like George Formby and other ERSA performers, our boys just might make it through on back home. The Army's life is fine. Let's max out that war spot, shall we? And more political power? Sign us up. Hobart's funny. Although many know him as the savior of England and the military genius behind the counter-revolution, General Percy Hobart is known to military officers and strategists across the world for his expertise when it comes to armored warfare. The crown jewel of his armored career is aptly dubbed uh, Hobart's Funny, a nickname given to a series of tank designs or designed under Hobart's direction. Both during his time in the now defunct People's Engineers and his re-rebranded re -re Royal Engineers. <clears throat> Featuring modified armored vehicles sourced from our allies and contacts in the nations such as France, Italy, Russia, and the Americas, each modified and outfitted to perform a specific task, these funnies have proven themselves time and time again. Featuring tanks. Uh, scorpion or crab flails mounted to the front to clear mines, tanks with mounted flamethrowers that either tow a fuel tank or to keep one internally dependent on the model, tanks with bulldozers to clear obstacles like hedgerows and barricades, tanks with massive mortars instead of a main gun for busting bunkers, bridge laying tanks, amphibious tanks like the duplex drives, fast scene tanks, ramp tanks, searchlight equipment tanks, plow tanks, one onion mine layers, and more. The list of funnies never ceases to expand as Hobart and his engineers crack on with the ingenious work, utilized by division both at home and abroad, also sourced. Uh, to our allies, these Hobart's funnies are sure to aid in any current or future war efforts as we continue to modernize our armed forces in an endless bid both to win the global arms race. But at least brains no longer. Oh, that's kind of cool. Also, over that earlier event with us, so talking about being in the Third International, I hope the devs eventually like uh, try it out where we don't aren't part of Third International and whatnot, and we're actually like independent and whatnot. The Second Council. As Hobart consolidates his rule, he sets on England Cromwell more and more. Doing so, he realizes that all the power under one singular ruler is unwieldy. He also needs men who can face him down. Hobart, for all his confidence in his judgment, knows he can be wrong sometimes. So we'll gather a second council state just like which is how Cromwell rule. This council will be led by Hobart, of course, but it will act more like a cabinet than anything else. It will be filled with the brightest minds of every field needed to run a state in the modern era. Economists, psychologists, social engineers, military planners, and theorists of all political and theoretical leanings have gathered in London today. There they have a grand debate moderated by Hobart himself, and whom I redeem the most convincing will be invited onto the council. As the greatest mind of the nation begins to spar, crowds gather. Finally, after many exhausting hours, a dozen men have been chosen to fill the seats. Now all that is left is, as Hobart likes to say, get down to brass tacks. Onwards. Onwards, onwards, onwards in military constitution. Or militarist constitution. The new constitution of the British nation is ready to be written by Hobart. Hobart has no legal knowledge of any renown and or renown and, and such. I was written a constitution tilted very heavily towards the military's demands. A standing army of no less than 100,000 men is now a constitutional guarantee. A military budget of no less than 50% of the total government spending is also constitutionally mandated. These two are just dozens of protections for the military baked into the document. These political and social rights are literally tacked on to the bottom. Awaken British nationalism, because I want to rush down here pretty quickly. So, I want that extra research slot. Uh, let's help us with stability, even though we're maxed out. Conscription is now just a half measure, casing a broad measure taking everyone from 18 to 30. Hobart, however, despite, despite his own advanced age, knows a 30-year-old conscript is not much use to anybody. Instead, the ages will be narrowed to 18 to 24. Well, the group of conscripts at the prime of their lives will be much more able to withstand the rigors of the modern war and be more open to training in the harsh regimes or regimes of Hobart's military. Ah, very good. Ah, we actually made another, another tank division. Fantastic. Alright, so you guys can stop using up all our fuel first for now. Hmm, so I want to get another guy here first. People's Republic of Argentina, huh? How long do we have for this? Till the 31st of May. Ah. And they can't quite pierce our armor division, that's good. Surprised he hasn't learned enough or more yet. Oh, we have another one here too, good. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, and 
Revolutionary Exportation Directory. Well, I don't know if it's Revolutionary Exportation Directory. Here, come over here. We want to know as much as we possibly can about these guys. Not a lot of manpower. A couple divisions here and there. Oh, they have no navy, basically. Cool. In the meantime, we're going to uh, go with two. Military constitutionalism. All parties come to recognize the failings of democracy. In the UK, it paralyzed the system and allowed the syndicalists to take over. In America, uh, democracy plunged a nation into not one, but two civil wars in a hundred years. In Russia, the state constantly walks a tightrope between anarchy and despotism as, a wobbly, as its wobbly democratic institutions continue to threaten to fail and fall. Hobart has seen democracy in action and has seen it fail time and time again. He has resolved to not make the same mistake once more. Instead, he shall create a ruling junta led by himself. No elections, no pretense of democracy, just a rule of law and order. Some of his more liberal advisors are dismayed at his decision, but there's little they could do. With his power secure and troops still on the streets, the people read the announcement of the cancelling of elections and shrug apathetically. They want just want peace, and Hobart knows that. Those who do feel the need to protest will fall into line in time one way or another. And so a parliamentary democracy dies. British nationalism is a bit of an oxymoron. While the Bretons have always been proud of their country, it has never been to the extent of the Americans or British or hacking even the French. It was this lack of patriotism that gave the syndicalists their opening to worm their way into power. In Obert's new government, however, the British people will find a nation to be proud of, as the French proudly sing Lento National and the Germans sing Heil der in Siegerkranz. The British will sing Land of Hope and Glory just as loudly and will fight to defend their new nation as they do at home. Absolutely. In the meantime, oh, do you not have any... Oh... Well, that is not ideal, is it? We need carrier planes, do we not? Well, that's what we got for now. And... Naval craft. Even Ali wouldn't mind using some cast. Basic, interwar. Basic some wireframes, medium. So that is not ideal. Let's save just in case. It might be. It might go. We might go and do well with this. But we might not. So we're using infantry with infantry. So. And the offense. Charismatic. There you go. Yeah, look at that. We're good. Oh, 240, That's pretty nice. Ooh, actually, if we do this. We can't go to war economy, darn it. Okay. G for the Navy. Yeah, it's already fishing. It sounds like what we really need. Power. I like that. Could we land? Probably not. How many divisions do they have? Is just one? No. Oh. Force it. We need at least one place to land. That's all we really need. Do some bombings instead. Colonel Lex Leopard is a president. Very nice. And if this doesn't go well, that's why I saved and we'll uh, reconvene. Yeah, it looks like it's not going so great. So, hello. Oh, it's not got all their navy. That's good. Uh, we're going to relook look at this in just a little bit. And here we go. We've landed. And we actually went through Cork instead of Dublin and Belfast. You know, I never invade through Cork, so. Um, we're doing all right. Not great. Not fantastic. But we're doing okay. As we're struggling here in the south, just a little bit. Um, it is what it is. Uh, do we have air superiority at all? We should really have air superiority if we really had it. So, ah, uh, fine. Our navy, our army isn't really all that great. Stuff we gotta continue working on. Uh, less three thousand, three thousand. You know, it is what it is. That's the case. You know what? You are gonna hold. You're not gonna attack there just yet. It's fine. Let them struggle. Let them struggle. Let the infantry go in. We need the army XP anyways, which is also why I wanted to go to war this early as well. Uh, military I command. Ooh, naval repair is pretty good to have. Skill, experienced pilots, armored corps. That just makes sense for us. Yeah. We gotta get rid of this debuff for us. It's really bad. And grab some of this too. That'd be very nice. Sure. Reviving British nationalism. 
Um, as Hobart looks up from his office in the old war building, he sneers at the people he sees below. They look like mindless fools, animated only over basic needs or societal necessity. They simply cannot do as if Britain Hobart. Uh, the Britain Hobart wishes to build is to come into existence, as an important first step to kick some spirit back into the disinterested Britons. Uh, Hobart has decided to install a new nationalism into the people. While Britons have always been proud of the country and its history, it's never been to the same degree as America or even the French. Hobart has now endeavored to change them. As the popular population sits before the radios tonight, they will hear, along with the originally scheduled programs, planned breaks to tell the ionized history of Britain's greatest victories. Place the Agin Court. Hastings is just a few of the veritable cornucopia of the glory that defines British history. Not only that, but these stories will be angled in a way to reawaken the love of Britannia most Britain abandoned under the cynicalist yoke. Or due to the apathy <clears throat> around the political violence after the counter revolution. Uh, with due time, a considerable amount of effort, Britain will be proud again. Awaken Britannia. We're going to get more now. Yeah, I guess we made it over there. Uh, you got to help out, man. Come on. What are we fighting? Oh, that's mounds, no wonder. You have more than enough supply here. You know what? How about just keep the infantry here for now. The royal wedding. Come back to here. Yeah, let him attack us for now. Fine. Tactic conscription and future warfare. Hobart is a visionary. He knows warfare is advancing rapidly, especially in a revolutionary age like the one he lives in. He demands that his Britain remain on the cutting edge of military theory. That is why he has established a new military research institute. They already have written up schematics for a series of specialized tanks nicknamed Hobart's Funnies. While these Funnies are up to debate, it's what they signify that is really to be celebrated. Britain is once again pulling ahead in the military thought race and will not allow, itself, allow herself to lag behind once more. Yeah. I do want to get at least one doctrine done. At least get some sort of doctrine started and going. Get some medium tanks. We're going to wait for a little bit. Everything else. Improved carrier. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Uh, improved heavy hull. Uh, improved light ship. Improved cruisers. Well, I like light cruisers a lot. So, let's do battery 2, anti air, uh, active sonar is fine, get some radar, secondary batteries, armor cruiser 3, level 2 is okay, medium batteries light, uh, aircraft facilities are good, we need depth charges eventually here too, oh, let's get some torpedoes, jack of all trades, there we go, nice. Carriers, it's not bad, it's not great. Yeah. There you go. Let's see they'll attack us again. I like to get Limerick. Ah, see, they will attack us again. Should be able to win here. Hey, he's learning. Which is also why I wanted to do this too. Very good. As much as I want to go spear firepower, I say we will go mobile warfare. Some more breakthrough, division speed, organization, whatnot. Oh, there you go. Well, he didn't really learn anything, so there you go. So now we can actually cut you down probably a little bit. Uh, save you. Go home. Invade Belfast up here now. Probably not. Invading like this is probably a bad idea. But we'll try it anyways. Hey, one ship left. Not a ton of manpower. That's okay with us. Cool. Four divisions is too much for us to fight right there. Five, six, can you do this? Boop, boop. Perhaps, maybe? We have a better chance fighting there. Of course, easy tanks would be better, but still. Five, that's good enough. Oh, that's good enough, too. Now look at that. They are attacking us, aren't they? No, hold. They really don't want us here, huh? Sounds pretty normal. In the meantime, if you're going to get some 
engineers. And I bet you we'll have some artillery on there too. 1938. Empty tank would be nice. Grab that. You know what? You're not going to lose. You're going to force defense. You're going to force attack. We'll force defense. So that's really, really extremely costly for them. Future warfare, very good, and it's just financial policy. The syndicalist economy is a mess of nationalization. Dozens of bureaus oversee every industry imaginable from bullets to condoms. This other system to move at a snail's pace and is rife with corruption. It's let's clear. It's time to clear the system, which must be left with some sort of logic. To fix it, Hobart has found two options that he likes best, but is unable to choose. First option is a goal in all in nationalization. Just give it some better organization leadership. Second option is to reprivatize everything and take the government out of the economy as much as possible. Both well, these options have their pros and cons, but one must, of course, be chosen. Really learning a lot with David Sterling here. And... We've lost 15,000. Our finest hour, we about this. Please go ahead. Delhi, Bharatiya Commune, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. And that costs us a lot. But it costs them even more, so. Hey, good job, United Mexican States. Just a little bit more time, no more fighters, and whatnot. We get the division out of there. We'll try to go for Limerick. And. I wonder, can you actually take this tile? Keep that guy in place. As long as we get Limerick, that's the most important thing. Anything here? Oh, I guess I did do charismatic, did I not? Four, 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 it's fine. Hello. Goodbye, convoys. Okay, we got plenty of trucks now. Um, light tanks. Motorization drive. Proper heritage. It's not bad. Quick improvisation. Political power be nice. State serves the military. That makes sense. It's not this one, though. Armor. Lights. Ooh, are we making any mediums yet? No. We need, actually, a range of mediums. So once we get this, uh, uh, this one done. There you go. Plus another close and boom. Uh, let's continue going some stuff up here, too. Where is that? To dissolve the militias, we need to definitely do that command. Uh, Central Command, I've read this earlier, so if you're again, please go ahead. Yeah, it's very important to get rid of that. Amphibious tanks, it's important and all, but... There you go. Improved light tanks, medium tanks. There you go. Well, I guess we're still waiting for the chassis, aren't we? No? Basic mediums. Fighting drills. Oh, basically, it is basic meters. Oops, my bad. Well, we need more MXP2, god dang it. Always do, don't we? Keep him in place for now. Come on. And uh, we've almost got him. Wounded, huh? Oh, come on. 87. They were so close. What's going on here? I don't think we'll be able to really invade these guys, but that's alright.
We actually landed, look at that. Which one's more important, here or there? You go there. Uh, you go up there or there. Okay, this is really dumb. I'm about ready to redo this inv invasion once again. And we actually made it Dublin. Go figure. That's actually very nice. But they keep attacking us here too, which I'm kind of okay with as Raymond Briggs is becoming a cavalry leader, which I don't remember us using any cavalry. cavalry. So, yeah, we improve these divisions quite a bit. Um, in the meanwhile, we're doing People's Officer Corps. Pe officers have a duty, and that is to be loyal to the revolution. By establishing a centralized People's Officer Corps and ending the terrible practice of military units of voting for their own leaders, we can make sure they fulfill that duty. This is all the militias. The arms in the hands of the rabble have been tolerated for too long now. While enemies hold on to these remains of a bygone age, for some reason, we know that only discipline is a way forward. That'd be good. Very, very good. Uh, motorized branches. Uh, that's going to be bad either. But other than that, we're going to improve here, but I still want to go down here quite a bit. Uh, militarist constitution, yeah. Yeah, it seems like militarist constitution awaken British nationalism. It seems like we should keep the market in check and then go to command, military command economy. So, or privatization frenzy. Uh-huh. And military industrial complex. That sounds like a good one, too. Subordinate Parliament, growing military domination. Keep the market in check. Hmm. Either one, really. Hobart orders, the economy obeys. Privatization, I think. Birth and British. I think we'll go with keep the military, keep the market in check. That sounds like more fun. It allow the market to do what it wanted. It could backfire horrendously. It'll lead to a waste of money, wasted effort, and wasted potential. However, the Tuck's centralization efforts were messy. Hobart will begin a fine tuned reform program to turn this mess of layering authority into a clear and concise system to make the economy hum like a newly manufactured tank a military command economy. Civilians do not know the meaning of efficiency. They're too used to leisure, lives of leisure and want. Meanwhile, soldiers know how to run things with the utmost talent. In view of the fact that the Hobart has decreed that the National Economic Planning Board will be at least 90% staffed with military officers. Some civilians will be led on to give the veneer of equal power sharing, but with the officers outnumbering them handily, there is little they can do. Also, this is probably an unrelated boon, but with the military controlling the board, the board will work in the military's interest in all things as well. Happy almost 1939, everybody. What do we got here? Another infantry division? Very nice. They just love attacking us here, which I don't... I'm not complaining too much, in all honesty. I like it. Helps our infantry out, too. Even though I should not have done that, and we should have a... Uh, hello, Germany. This is sad. Um, Pacific States, uh, Venezuela. Another one. And another fuel, eventually. Uh, we do need to make some medium tanks. But you know what? If he's going to continue learning, cavalry leader, trickster, organizer... I'm, I'm okay with it. Just depleting him as much as possible. 90,000 dead? Very nice. It's going to cost a lot of political power here, but it's alright. I mean, uprising. Oh, good for them. Now, can we do this again, please? And do this over here better? Dissolve all the militias. Give us more organization, please. Let's keep the markets in check. Got a good support, definitely. Ah, oh, yes, we can. They'll get Syrian involved. Now, with us taking this towel, will they edit how much they're attacking us here? Maybe not. Maybe. Yemen. Cairo Axis. Very good. They're out of manpower. Oh, just like the famine. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm actually just fighting on somebody else here, too. Already. Call the Netherlands. Because that would be very nice to do. Happy 1939, everybody. Ah, naval bombers. Good. Toad anti tank, very nice. Um, with 1939, construction speed, build, 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 build. Good. Take one at least for now. Support equipment's not bad. That stuff is good. Into our armored card is fine. Eventually. Albania's gone. Oh, hello. Oh. Well then. I mean, look at that. Why, why would we move? We're doing very well. We don't have to do anything. We don't have... We have our max of stability doing this, too, so... Boom. 
gives us some arm XP, some more experience. Why, wouldn't she, why shouldn't we continue this? It's not bad. Keep building, 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 building. As we keep the market in check, military command economy, more construction speed, and factory output. As we should go get a post cynical boom. With the chaos of the coup, many expected the British economy to sag into an abject depression not seen since the Great Depression. However, Hobart's quick response to the economic chaos has led the nation to legitimate prosperity more so than under the tuck. The economic boom has led many of Hobart's harshest critics to mellow their tune just or stop speaking altogether. Everybody's making money hand over fist, and who's to say when this will end, if ever? Any 39, better guns, yes. In the meantime, now we have enough. We can make tanks. And decent tanks of that. Uh, I like speed. Speed is good. Medium type. Two man turrets are good enough. Small armaments. Um, close support gun. Do we have a basic medium cannon? No? It's odd. Automatic cannon. Radio and brew radio. I like that one. More reliability is always decent to have. Uh, riveted armor. Cost. We don't have any chromium, so cast armor would probably be better. Busted for now. Gas engines. I like the speed. Uh, special modules. Honestly, I don't hurt anything else. So there you go. That's all I'm gonna do. Start making some of these guys. That would be fantastic. We get maybe one more motorized and that's it. Firefighting drill is good, better artillery. Attacking us? Not quite. Armor. As much armor as possible. Post Cindy Boom. Oh, hello. We post. We uh, something else here, huh? Republican Air Force. Full of political dominance. The Legion is crushed, the right club is scattered, the syndicalists are dead or in exile, and Atlee is overcowed. Nobody remains able to challenge Hobart in the political sphere. The Parliament wants a bulwark against authoritarianism. It's little more than a rubber stamp to Hobart's decrees, with a body only meeting once a month attached or stamped to whatever Hobart demands before leaving. To the average person, they have accepted the new status quo. Besides, Britain finally knows peace and prosperity, so the promise, but never quite given by the syndicalists. Why fix something that obviously works? More political power, army XP, war support, construction speed, factory output. As we must begin rebuilding the empire. And are they done? Hey, it's level 5. Great job. Alright, we're done here. Full in. Full frontal assault. Good. Oh, look at that. An encirclement. Hey, we linked up here too. Oh, they're forcing the fence. What a shame. Now this is inefficient to do it like this, but we're going to use a full thing here. Go ahead. Crush them. Oh, they're crushing them here, definitely. Oh my god. Uh, the Irish should have just killed themselves. The Icelanders have expanded their waters in the North Atlantic. Uh, they claim that they are only trying to get over the lingering effects of black money, but they nevertheless have created unrest from Scottish fishermen in the North. They're a small nation, whatever fish they pull in won't affect us too badly, but we have a chance to attempt to rekindle the trade agreement that our two Atlantic Isles share before the revolution. What a deal. Oh, look at this. Oof. Rocket shooting, nice. Not artillery. We need maintenance companies. We need a lot of things here too. Um, plane stuff, yes. Even better plane stuff, yes. Canadian, uh, uh, Icelandic deal signed. 
If the royals have signed a deal with the locals of Iceland, encourage them to fish in our waters and take the fish that rightfully belong to us. We must retaliate or face humiliation over being belittled by such a tiny nation. Could just test the waters. All right then. Oh, look at that. Now you're finally circled. Kill yourself. Or we'll do that for you, I guess. Uh, Icelandic fishing trawlers are claiming our waters and stealing catches that should be rightfully belonging to ours. If you respond, show them their place. Yes. Warning off the trawlers. Following this outrageous assumption about the fishing rights from Iceland, we have sent a small detachment of destroyers out to stop the threat against our fishermen. The destroyers, the Arnus, Sea Wolf, and Sparrowhawk have seen success in warding up any Icelandic fishermen who foolishly try to claim the waters. Britannia rules the waves. As we should, and we will. Wow, look at that. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Makes me very happy. And they're out of stuff, anyways. Oh, they had a few ships left. First conquest done. Mm, took us way too long, but whatever. Any upgrades for you? No. We already have no fuel, so whatever. Cuba, yes. We have one for now. I want to see what the full political dumbs does for rebuilding the empire. Do we need, of course, we're just up against these guys, too. Oh, we're almost already there. Okay, um. Maybe I could do it like this. I would like to get onto the continent. Ireland, we could have intelligence. Got a couple of days for that, it's fine. Let me get to where they need to be. Uh, up to 40. Bombers, fighters, carriers. Uh, very nice. This industry is very good. Fuel. Better artillery, it's very good too. Um, English fishermen attacked. Oh boy. We received reports from Icelandic patrols. Uh, from the Coast Guard, have been equipped with net cutters and sent after fishing boats. Not good. As the Icelandic vessel of Sylvia and her trawlers, a fishing hook cutter nets are compromising your ability to collect fish. Our ports in the North Atlantic are spreading too thin to protect all our fishermen. We must send the reinforcements at once. Reinforce the squadron. It's not cool, man. There you go. Full political dominance. I love it. And women soldiers, civvies. So how strong are these guys? Not that much manpower, a couple of divisions. The navy is bigger and better. But we're gonna say just in case, anyways. Super successful doing this, but that's alright. And you know what? I'm gonna have uh, you do this. See what you can do. You wanna attack our guys? We'll destroy their ships. Oh, we landed. Shnikes. Alright then. Okay then. Alright, we sunk a sub. Pretty good. Sh sure. Why not? You know what? We could probably force it and do even better. There you go. 
Look at that. Looks like we'll in there, maybe we'll win here, maybe, maybe not. Yes, no, maybe so. Oh, they're forcing the defense too, so. Cape Car Railway, not bad. Very impressive, very impressive. Oh, lost some convoy, that sucks. Good, you landed. Alright, so that's too disgusting. There we go. That's better. Land of Valonia. I just wanted a base here on the continent. Denmark. Iceland has been too problematic for us. Just in case. Construction. Fuel. Get, take Amsterdam, come on. How about we do a little better here? Keep him in place. Nice. Yeah, that's fine. And after time is ours. Very nice. Oh, well, if, no, if no one's there, we lost three combos. That's not a deal. Oh, yeah, we got Rotterdam too. Rotterdam. Canadian fleet arrives. The Royalists have recently arrived in Iceland to help them claim our waters as their own. Friends of the squadrons that has, has our Republican Navy on the back foot. We need a new strategy for our focus on the Atlantic. Get aggressive. Stick together. Get aggressive. Oh, direct. Yes, please. Alright, they're gone. I guess we solved the rubber problem too. Oh, I have no Grisha pack. Whoops. Oh well. Hey, good job, guys. I guess it's more than the Navy too to work with. Not bad. I'm sure they'll just find us as soon as they can, so we might want to send a detachment down to uh, at least Indies. And we're gotten it too, which I like it quite a bit. So what do we got? We're throwing a little rule over Egypt. Gold Coast. Cape to Cairo. India. Ooh, that'd be good for us to expand in India. Get a foothold in the New World. Pacific Possessions. Hong Kong, that's really easy. Bit of Ireland. Our men marched through Dublin. The Irish army has also been shattered in the face of our armed forces. In the meantime, we must decide on the future of Ireland. Some argue that Ireland should be annexed into the Union of Britain, while others argue that this would be an act of unsocialist imperialism, and doing so would not be supported by the Irish people, bring us into a bloody guerrilla war. True Irish Republic. Directly ruled. Irish, Irish Republican Army. Limited autonomy. Yeah, no. Any other limited place. Over Egypt, eh? Hmm. So we'll be bouncing around a whole bunch. Now, being in there is not bad. We could probably focus maybe first somewhere else. I mean, that would put us in war against some of these guys, uh, like the Third International, Entente Reichspact. But joining the Reichspact could give us access to maybe Liberia, Kingdom of Spain. Hmm. We beat up the Third International, which I guess Ukraine is a part of too. Look at that. 
And Hungary's independent, wow. That is weird and bad for them. Austria. Regardless, we're down here too. So we could go to war with Insulindia and maybe jump into... I guess we will have to fight the Entente, really. So we're fighting the Entente anyways. Hmm. They're in the Reichs Pact. They're an international. Uruguay. Um... Hmm. We have many different directions we could take. Core Prosperity Sphere, which we'll put us in war with the Japanese eventually as well. Brought to a commune, please. You should do better than that. Kabul Pact. Ooh, Iran is getting smacked down hard. I don't want to fight the Reichs Pact yet. And we might not even fight them in the end, too. Once this war is done, we can go to war with Spain and maybe invade them. That might be the plan here. Of course, we do want to invade the Republic of Ireland, too. In the meantime, anyways. Um, on Britain, uh, Sultan, um, Egypt, Gold Coast. Falkland Islands. Is it possible to get down to here? Go to go to war with Denmark. Break into here. Break into to invade Canada. Which is putting the war on top. I think just going to war with Spain first would be good. Because uh, you just can't naval invade into the Americas. So there's nowhere to go through. The PSA is one against Mexico. This should have been our 51st state. Lower California. Ugh. Should have been. Hmm. I'm kind of stuck. Not going to lie. I'm kind of stuck and stumped by this. Where do we go? Oh, wait, fight of Ireland. Did we not choose that already? Where did he chose us? I don't get doubly penalized. Okay, in the Netherlands, after a short campaign across the marshes and urban center of the Netherlands, we've managed to take down the proud nation. The Netherlands are now in our hands. We must decide on its future. Come on, Cuba. Do we not have enough? Okay, so if you can't supply us, we'll go somewhere else. Survivability studies, heavy machine guns. There you go. Hmm. I do kind of want to eat them, though. So once these guys are done, go to war with them, jump and take out the Entente after that, I think. So, take out the Republic of Iceland. Jump, destroy Spain, destroy Portugal, the French part of the Entente, get some territory here, invade through here to get into Guiana, and eventually through Canada that way. Now, of course, we also invade Norway as well. So I think that's the goal. So actually, what if we send you volunteers help support your uh, group here first? Um, motorized, send a tank and you. Just, just hurry the heck up. Like, come on. Good. 39. Rubber. Ah, uh, extraction. Mm, we're actually going to go ahead and throw on a medium tank here. We don't have enough. That's alright. Motorized is fine, too. Hardness is fine. We got her. Ah, there are guns, yes. Nice. A daring plan for the Atlantic. Admiral Norman Holbrook has come to us to plan to break the Canadian station on the island. Recently returned from a hunting trip, Holbrook is inspiration to come by. Or come to him. Eventually, everyone falls in a routine pattern. He believes if we track the Canadians long enough, they'll eventually reveal a pattern of when they retire to harbor. Once alone in the town, we can send a submarine to blow their armored cruiser before they even know what's happening, giving us the edge in the Atlantic. Authorize a raid. Because none of that will ever backfire, right? Should be good enough for us to do our things we need to do down here, which is good. Um, naval stuff. Screening efficiency capital. Ship attack, detection, sub visibility. 
screening, capital ship. Positioning is good too. It's very good actually. You know what? We got even more here. These are fighters. More cast. Very good. A delegation for the Far Eastern Republic. I thought I read this last time. So they've sent us a foreign delegation asking for an official recognition of our state as a legitimate Russian government. The regime of the self-proclaimed supreme ruler of Russia may seem ridiculous to us, but a revealing free to oppose the Russian government in Petrograd and Moscow, we can firmly recognize the Far Eastern independence. Socialists, they have a recognition. So basically we're going to be doing this to make sure that we win elsewhere. Come down here, and we'll do that. Very good. And very nice. Mobilize industry. We convert. We need to convert every single industrial complex to produce material valuable to the war effort. The British Rail Reform. The British Rail Syndicate is a horrid state. We're investing in our infrastructure while ensure flawless cooperation between syndicates all over the island and... Oh, look at this. Industrial Veteran Program. Promoting a practical experience and the factors will lead to further increase in efficiency. So, if you like, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see what we can do, really, with the rest of the Commonwealth of Britain. Or a program with England, Scotland, and Ireland. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.